Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Fantastic Fest 2023 for another review. I'm Perry Nemiroff, and I'm sitting with... John Algetz. So we saw Secret Screening number two last night. That movie was a movie that came from TIFF to Austin for Fantastic Fest. It is Dream Scenario starring Nick Cage as Paul, your average guy who suddenly one day starts appearing in people's dreams. It is utterly fascinating so fascinating and so incredibly well executed that i would call the first two thirds of this movie near perfect i thought it was absolutely brilliant for me though i think it started to spin out of control a little bit with a certain idea it introduces in the tail end of the movie and because of that it does not stick the landing as much as it needed to for me but i still am very much enjoying thinking about this concept over and over and over again yeah, and you perfectly nailed it there. The, the first two thirds of the film, I was 100% on board. And then it just hits a point where it lost me. And, you know, you talk about that there was a concept introduced in the last third that really should have just been its own film yeah. and really could be its own film. And maybe somebody out there is going to work on something with it. Um, maybe not. I'm not saying like a sequel or a spinoff or anything, but just the concept. I would, honestly, I would watch a sequel um, about that thing. <laughs> and it just it just felt like it almost should have just ended as soon as it introduced and not have anything more beyond that mm-hmm. um, or just not even introduce it. But it, you know, that first, the first part I was, I was, it had, the movie had grabbed me. It had held on to me and I was like ready for whatever it had. And then it just fell off. I will say that when it goes into the third act of the film, it did not completely lose me. And I still think there are wonderful ideas there, but I don't think those ideas served the themes of the movie and Paul's whole narrative as well as it needed to in order to leave the movie in a satisfying place for someone who wanted a very full, rich story. Maybe a story with more answers than this movie gave you. I, for one, absolutely love a movie that doesn't necessarily spell everything out for the viewer in certain respects though I think I needed a little more information from this film in order to really appreciate the points that it's making and fully understand what's happening to Paul and a lot of people in the world but on the other hand I do need to re-emphasize the fact that because I didn't get certain answers it's been making for a far richer post-screening conversation for me and I have had a damn good time trying to answer those questions with people yeah, we've been we've been sitting here, you know, doing interviews and stuff all day today. And in between our interviews, we've been talking about this movie a lot. Mm-hmm. And we've been going over like, what do we think about these certain things? How did we interpret? It? How did we how did we how would we react things? to certain how things? Would, how would we handle Paul's situation? Yeah, How would we handle it? And like if if we saw this premise, like what would we want to do with this premise that this film maybe didn't do? Or like, you know, just there's so many different possibilities with this idea uh, and it's made for some very, 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 like, fun and just engaging, like, nerd talk. Um, we've been talking a lot about the about the general of this film, talking about the, the overall how we feel. Let's get a little bit granular here for a second. And let's talk about the performances. Let's talk about Nick Cage. Mm, so uh, our Our everyman. You, you, in the beginning here, you called him this very average, very normal man. But I would go so far as to say that he was, like, beyond like he was above average in how mundane of a person you can call him boring because other characters in the movie call him boring (laughs) yeah like he he's described as like the the least interesting man in the world and then the most interesting man in the world and then the most yes uh how does like I'm, i'm still trying to wrap my brain around how does somebody as like famous and well recognizable as nick cage so effectively sort of melt into this role as someone so unmemorable. Well, one of the most brilliant things that Nick Cage does via his performance, and this movie does overall in terms of how it comes together, is like, you guys know, Nick Cage is one of the most talented actors in the business. Of course, he can make us believe that he is Paul. But the other cool thing about this movie is that it's also very much about someone getting their 15 seconds of fame, experiencing that meteoric rise to stardom, only to crash and burn 15 seconds 
seconds later. And, you know, given how how everybody knows Nick Cage and how he's had ups and downs in his career, the fact that he's able to feel like a full living, breathing character that isn't Nick Cage in this movie, but also add an extra layer to the experience because it's Nick Cage in that role. It's very difficult to do both things at once, but they very much do in this film. And he's just so able to, like, so quickly ingratiate himself with the audience. Like, I immediately was on board with him as a person. I was just like, hey, listen, I understand where he's coming from. I I can, I almost felt like I could relate to him in a few things. I haven't obviously been in this situation, so I can't relate that much. But, <laughs> like, I, like, I was on board with it, but he just, you know, he started making mistakes, and, mm-hmm. you know, because we have to have conflict in our movie. And, like, he, cause he sort of, I was able to still sit there and go, "Hey, I understand where you're coming from, and I I sympathize with you, but you're you're almost sort of pushing things a little too far sometimes, or making the wrong making the wrong choice in any given situation." But because it's Nick Cage, I'm I'm just on board, and his performance was just so uh, so gripping. Yeah, he's he's definitely something else in this. I really appreciated his performance. I am full blown obsessed with this concept. The thing that's keeping me from love, love, loving this movie is the fact that I think the idea spins out of control a little bit towards the tail end. So it just doesn't stick the landing as much as I would like it to. But because I think the first two thirds are so successful and and I do very much appreciate a movie. Yes, I want a full, complete, satisfying story, but I also appreciate a movie that leaves some of the story in my hand, whether it's filling in certain gaps on my own or inspiring me to think how I would react to a certain situation. So for those reasons, I am giving this movie a seven out of 10. I, you know, we agreed on Toxic Avenger. We're gonna disagree here. Um, but just barely. Okay. I, I want to rewatch this movie. I only saw it the one time. I feel like if I rewatch it, it'll change my score. But right now I'm sitting at a six out of 10 personally. Okay. Six that, out of 10 is, is still positive. Yeah. The first, there. the first two thirds of that movie just grabbed me and held on tight. But the last third just, it just left me sitting there going, huh? And not in like a, not in like a good way. It was more of just like, like oh, I, I, I kind of wish that they didn't do it the way that they did it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, maybe, as I said, maybe on future rewatches, I'll warm up to that to that last little bit of the film a little bit more. Um, but it's just I don't know if I can give it more than a six. I get it. I get it. So we have a seven. We have a six. Now we're going to toss it to you. When you do see Dream Scenario, you have to make sure to hit the comment section below because we want your thoughts on the movie as well. That is it for Dream Scenario, but that is not it for Collider at Fantastic Fest 2023. Make sure you go check out our Toxic Avenger review and also head on over to the Collider Interviews YouTube channel because there are so many great filmmaker interviews oh, over there. Oh, so many. <laughs> we, got, we got some good stuff coming for We've you. We've been busy. We've been busy. Go check those out and we'll see you soon from Fantastic Fest. Fantastic Fest.